So let's get today's class started. Um, I am doing okay. It has been a very stressful couple months and I feel like I need to explain why I've been gone for so long. Um, around January, um, my rent, the, where I rent, we were given notices that the owner had sold the, um, the apartments and that new policies were going to be put in along with like a rent spike and all this crap and I was comfortable where I was, I mean it was my home base and then all of a sudden the ground under me shook and we had to scramble to get out before we were charged for everything under the sun that is, you know, that you can charge someone with. It wasn't just like a, an other, another buyer that came in that lived locally, it was like a, an institution, some kind of, some kind of corporation that bought the apartments and wanted to do like a corporate style of renting. So I knew they were going to charge for every last thing that they were going to charge for. And I'm like, all right, it's time for me to buy my own house. So I'm really lucky to have found this house um, that I am in now. It happened pretty quickly. Um, in like a day, everything kind of just seemed to fall into place. I'm really lucky that happened. And then we, um, we moved. And it was a real hassle moving because we were waiting on a letter that allowed us to move in early. I wanted to have an early entry so I could finish my office and get back to classes as soon as possible, but it just didn't seem, we were way in over our heads because the house, it all happened so quickly because the house was a um, mess. It was an, ab it has never, it's a hundred years old plus house and it has never been worked on. I think they did one renovation in the kitchen. The owners, like sometime 20 years ago, the owners were heavy smokers. Everything had to go. Everything was disgusting. Um, the walls were pink and yellow because of the smoking. The carpets were red. Ew. It was just a nightmare. So we were hustling me, Tyler, and uh, Julio, Abu, were, were, were working really, really hard every single day for like a month straight to just get it to an acceptable, livable standard. And that also included major demolition. Then Abu got coronavirus, um, and then I got coronavirus, and I have been, Abu's uh, mom also had coronavirus, and I think that's where we got it from, because she works at Walmart. Um, and it was horrible, because she has just been through, like, two different, ex like, waves of it, and she was suffering. And then Abu got it, and we had no idea that's what she got, because she has a flu every year around this time, and we thought it was just her regular flu season. But it hit her really, really hard, um, and then it hit Abu really hard, and then it hit me really, really hard. Um, so we had to take a two-week break from construction, um, which is bothering me because it, I don't like stopping. I want to finish everything in the interior. But right now there's like little to no dry, like there's mostly drywalled now um, as of today. A lot has been drywalled, but the kitchen is still not drywalled, and there's all this draft coming in, and it's not helping my chills, it's not helping me deal with this. I'm immunocompromised. I had pneumonia in 2018, no, 2018, um, in 2012 or something like that, um, and I have, you know, scarring on the inside of my lungs already, and it was really, really horrible to experience that, that pain that came with that virus. It's just horrible um, and upon calling the ambulance they didn't want me to be in the hospital they wanted me to stay home and apart from uh, Motrin and Tylenol they weren't going to offer any tests or anything like that luckily I had something to help with flus and I took that and it helped me get over most of it but even today yesterday I had like a whole day of fever and and it was just it's been chaos if you guys think I have been off I have been away from private sessions I have been vacationing I have been relaxing I, it has been zero relaxation um, absolutely zero relaxation the only relaxation I had uh, was the stream where I painted this month's uh, patreon rewards that was like the only amount of fun I had because I was actually talking to you guys and like while I was streaming I was symptomatic and I could barely breathe and it was just a nightmare <sighs> and I feel like the nightmare is over because it's just like from critique hour to critique hour that's like my um, that's like my landmark you know that's how I know things are getting back to normal that I can critique hour now and that's how I know like the dangers have passed um, but at the end of the day I really can't predict each day by day how symptomatic I'll be 
what I'll feel like, how much the virus is winning, how much I'm winning, what I should take, what I should eat when I don't feel like eating at all. And it, I really think this virus almost took my life. And I, I prayed. I, I, I kind of tried to stay positive. I have been, you know, fighting this. Like yesterday, all day in bed, I was just sitting in, I was just laying in bed with ice on my head. Like I couldn't move because of the fever. Um, and then today I've tried to do some like drywall with Abu, try to do some mudding, and I ca cannot do anything. <laughs> Um, so I thought, okay, maybe it'll be good for my spirit, because my f spirit feels very, very broken. It's just been two to three months of stress and hell. And um, so my, I feel like doing critique hour with you guys today will significantly raise my, you know, my energy level and my, my you know, reinvigorate my spirit and make me feel like myself again. Because I feel like I have lost myself completely in the amount of suffering I like that we've had to endure, um, that I personally have had to endure on top of like the, just the crazy unrecognizable state the world is in, you know, to have something that we recognize that is critique hour, um, might be, you know, might be good for all of us. <clears throat> so, uh... <clears throat> Thank you. I'm just reading through the comments. I'm gonna leave this in um, this this little blurb I have, uh, this little intro. I'm gonna leave it in for the for the critique hour recording, so that you guys can, you know, s you know, just be updated on why exactly I have been gone for so long. But I promise you, it was not a fun retreat. It was not a retreat. It was it was God's version of boot ca boot camp. It was like, hey, you want to get stronger as a soul? Here's some. Here's a shit sandwich. <clears throat> All right, let's get back to it. Welcome back to Critique Hour. Um, to submit your stuff for Critique Hour, go to istabrak.com and click on the little Reddit icon here. I am sorry if I'm short of breath. I already like feel it, the strain of talking. But uh, And I have a different mic. So this mic is even closer to my mouth. <laughs> so you guys are going to really get like the full HD short of breath experience. All right. If you want to submit your stuff, go to Reddit. Reddit has rules. Please don't submit fan art that is not an attempt to recreate the fan art in your more realistic attempt or take on it. Illustrations are accepted. Attempts at masterpieces are accepted, but remember that you will and most likely be advised to do some fundamental studies if you submit something that is, you know, lacking in fundamentals just because you submit an illustration of a certain tier does not mean you don't get critiqued. Everybody gets critiqued. Everybody gets the same kind of treatment. I do not welcome uh, single sketches, though. If, they can, if you can submit a bulk of sketches, that'll be great. If you want to submit your 14-day challenge, all 14 days, you can submit them here. Um, and, uh, excuse me. I chugged a bunch of water before class. And uh, yeah, so form studies, all that is acceptable on the Reddit. If you want to join as a patron, please do. I don't work with any marketing. I don't even know where my subscriber count is now. It's probably nowhere near 100 yet. Um, I mean, it is near 100 generally, but not even close to actually crossing the line. It seems to just slow down every time I'm close to the line. I don't even know if I've crossed it yet. So I don't work with any marketing, I don't work with any agencies or anything like that. If you want to support, if everybody here joined as a dollar patron, and I really wanted to continue this campaign, but I had to stop because we were moving, Patreon got stopped. Uh, but if you want to join as a dollar patron, just as a watcher, I mean, there's a reason why I call the single uh, dot, the, the, the watcher, the single dollar uh, pledge, a watcher, is because it really does watch over the community, it sustains the community, it does no dent, major dent on your wallet. I mean, everyone's financial landscape is different. If a dollar is something you can't spare because it's bus money or something, I completely understand that. But for those who, you know, feel like supporting, but in a less uh, impact, with less impact on yourselves, especially during this time, um, uh, you can just join as a dollar. Every other tier above that, including the apprentice tier, comes with different rewards. The apprentice tier comes with all of my brushes for the month of personal work that I do. Um, a, a membership in the Discord, which is a private Discord uh, community. Um, Photoshop files, homework on the Discord community, private streams and private video time lapse. 
instruction on every single piece of personal work I do, as well as JPEGs and full resolution files of everything um, that I do that month. So if you want to join as an apprentice, everything else is in between the, these rewards and the icons are here. Um, and um, the other announcement is the community uh, challenges. I have not announced anything yet. Uh, everything happened so quickly with the move and the house buying and all of that uh, that I just did not get any time to sit down and edit my post that was going to be the narrative prompt for the thumbnail, the environment thumbnail challenge that I was supposed to send out for the break. That will be out very, very soon. I will try my best to send those out um, for you guys. And um, I think that's it for announcements. As the weeks pass, as the months pass, we will get back into it. I promise it'll feel like home again. I'm not even saying this to you. I'm just saying this to myself so my anxiety goes down because I just, though it is all familiar, it's one thing going back into critique hour with my usual little closet office. <laughs> but now I have this big colossal room and my office and I just, it's not just that. It's a whole new room that I'm starting critique hour in again and it's, I'm like a, I'm a panic bird. I, I, I like having a familiar room or else I'm just going to freak out. So it's going to take me time too to get used to all this. Let's get started. Um, if you guys have any questions, make sure you ask me by the end of the class at Istabrak so I can see it highlighted. Thank you to everyone who's come today for the, for the live stream. I really appreciate those who come out. Um, I know the recordings are for those who are st restricted time and time, uh, time schedule and time zone wise, but for, the, for those who can join, uh, it's great when you guys are here. <clears throat> oh, 98.6K, okay. 1,400 subs to go. <laughs> we can do it, right? I'll be there by 2025. <laughs> All right, uh, so this piece has given me some trouble um, because I'm just trying to wrap my head around how I want to fix it. There are lighting elements that need to be corrected just in the lighting realm outside of disproportionate um, anatomy and the general acting and framing. So when you have issues with anatomy, acting, and framing, they're different, like when I say acting, I mean how you've decided to make her behave in the painting. So the acting is the, okay, so the acting is uh, the, like the, 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 the character, which has to do with gesture. All right, so anyone who takes notes and submits them to the Reddit community gets brushes for free. Um, uh, the better your notes, the more likely you're going to get a brush set for free. For those who don't have a brush set and can't afford it, I have always offered this service. If you guys take good notes off today's class and write those back to me and all those blurbs, you guys get a uh, PM and you message me on Facebook and you get a link to one of my brush sets of your choice. If the notes are really good, I give you the whole brush set, all my brushes. <laughs> Um, so the gesture um, is linked to another issue, which is the anatomy. But all of this is on its own little island off in the distance, and this is the horizon line. And then this island here nearby is just lighting alone. I'm sorry, if <laughs> I'm <Am I> right. <laughs> lighting is two different, it's, it's completely separate, it's a completely different uh, effect on the before and after. So I want to separate the before and after, like separate the changes that have to do with acting and anatomy and staging and framing and separate those because this, this though anatomy is, is knowledge technically, acting and staging and framing, I've talked about how as artists we are inclined to be good at accents and funny jokes and impressions. As artists, we're good at that outward expression. Some of us like to dance, some of us like also music. Um, so when I'm talking about like the way you've behaved, like the way you've framed her, she looks like she's, she's incredibly proud of her magic, but also there's a sinister quality, kind of like a twisted split in her mind that maybe has led her down a darker path. So it, you've, you've really brought this out, but and that's with acting. So you've you've done a good job with the acting, kind of like the, the 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 curtaining of her hair in front of her face, the downturn of her. This is all like your 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 top marks, top marks for that, and top marks for that, top marks for the twisting that one arm in front of the other arm. Um, 
maybe she's doing this kind of thing where her hand is this way but this is a point of interest and it's all the way down in the bottom of the canvas um, you've not really pushed the hair all the way in front of her face and kind of masked some of it uh, with a little bit of that that disheveled I don't care if I look like crap look kind of like scary um, messy uh, I mean they designed a whole horror character about a woman whose hair was right in front of her face <laughs> I mean, hair is a really really powerful scary thing when you haven't tied it up so you know that crazy lady that climbs out of a TV stupidest concept I've ever heard in my life but it freaked people out for like the good 10 years um, so <coughs> Excuse me. So that scary quality in the hair, you could have pushed that a little further. That's acting, staging. You basically have to think like a movie director. That's how you have to think. Um, I hope my voice isn't too shrill or close to the mic. I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of self-conscious with this mic, which is right close to my mouth instead of the usual Yeti I have. Okay, so that's some other stuff I'm going to change. And then we've got the gesture, which is great, but I kind of want to see how much more impact we have if the arm is all the way up there, kind of a little bit more twisted, a little bit more skinny. I also want her to look like somebody who doesn't really care about what she's going to eat tonight. I feel like she, she lives off the soles of her victims or she just doesn't care about what she eats. So I'm going to really, really quickly capture some of these um, edits that I have to remind myself. How I'm going to make them. A little bone jutting out there. I have a little uh, hint of a bosom there and then maybe I push the hand over here. I feel like the point of interest shouldn't be this low. Um, I kind of want to get the hand off screen completely but I shouldn't do that. And then the hair that's going to fall this way and that way and then a silhouette of the shape of her head which I'm going to try to make a little bit more square like that maybe a little bit more wind tossed or there's some kind of magical breeze coming from beneath nothing too mystical it might make her look heroic remember there's a if there's a breeze halo it makes the character look heroic you'll notice that all of the characters that look a little more dead and zombie like we don't really surround them with that breeze we kind of let that um, hair fall all their clothing kind of feel a little heavier a little more swampy um, and we wouldn't really equate the feeling of a swamp or a dead creature or a risen creature with a beautiful breeze you know a breeze is something we apply to the hero magician to the to the magical white magic to that light to that bright yellow we always hear, see their robes billowing so when I was designing my character I, I instilled so much magic um, and so much of that like that wind that moves around the character uh, so that might be something you don't want. You want everything to kind of feel stale and flat and fallen and, and dungeon-like. Um, yeah, like there's no breeze in a dungeon type deal. And then lighting. Lighting is this that's just completely misunderstood concept when it comes to what you guys draw. You guys think that the lighting is like this thing that sits in the background that helps the character... Um, no, the lighting is your character. Write that back to me. The lighting is the painting. Everything else, it, it just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So let's go backward and try to adjust some of this stuff. So I already found some nice gestures, somewhere to take this draw. She looks like, uh, she looks like, what's her name? Hella. I think it's from the nose, uh, Kate Blanchett. Definitely good referencing. So, um, I was going to open up Portrait Studio to help figure out the gesture a little bit further. Portrait Studio, if you don't know what it is, it's a reference generation uh, software. It helps us build characters and scenes, control the lighting. So I'm just going to help myself here. And oopsie. I'm a little bit out of practice with Portrait Studio. I'm just going to try to create this exact scene. All right. So I want the camera to be low because that's something we always forget to include when it comes to our characters, a low camera. And it's so important to remember that part of that staging, remember you have to be movie director, so the camera has to be functional. The camera has to be part of the experience. So this arm is going to move there. And I want that, it's, this, it's both a cat-like crawl forward 
So it's her kind of like crawling forward as well as the camera being low. So I'm going to press on W to get the actual move joint controls and that'll be that tucked. And then when I press 1 and move my mouse around I can control the lighting. So I really don't want this excessive lighting. I kind of want it to come in from one angle and that's the stuff behind her. The rest is going to be that secondary light. And then pressing E on the head joint I'm going to just try to get that same almost flirtatious, angry wife of Mrs. Mr. Rochester, Mrs. Rochester basically in Jane Eyre locked in the attic. Kind of that lost madness sort of. And so I feel like her, yeah, I feel like her spine would tilt upward and she would kind of tilt down like she's doing a little like a sitting but sticking her bum out kind of sort of thing. And I just want to force it. I mean, sometimes Portrait Studio will make it look a little bit kind of off because we're not, it's not skin. We don't have a skin layer. We have joints and a mannequin type piecing of plates together and that's okay if it looks a little bit off. You paint in the skin, you paint in that distance in between and you never, as tilt the chin inward, you wouldn't do it enough. We, you guys always forget to tilt the chin. I mean, look at how effective that is. Just the shadow. Oh, I love that. Just the shadow of the shoulder on the face. I love that. I love that. But something that I love more is when we have complete darkness on one side. Okay, because what we're going to do is throw in some of that light coming from this far section and then bring in a secondary light, which you can do. <clears throat> Indirect lighting, I'm just going to put in a point light here. And I'm going to use my controls to bring it in. A secondary light this way. I really don't want to go too crazy. And then just get that really, really strong. So it's your choice if that's how you want to do it. It doesn't really have to be that strong. Shadow softness, vertical angle. Oops, not that's not what I mean. I mean this one. Shadow softness, strength, and then the range. We can throw off that range. But I'm just curious, now that we've opened it up in Portrait Studio, how you cast the light off of this to her face if the arm was in the way and the arm, the other arm with the magic spell was in front. So it seems to me, which is a good thing, don't freak out, it's a good thing we turned off the indicator here and we're going to turn off the joints so that we can um, just look at the scene. So this is the scene we want and then we've got that background color uh, which we can darken down a little bit. So we've got a basic layout of how everything is looking. I'm not going to pose this hand this arm because we don't see anything but the hand on this. So and then the framing just happens right over here. <coughs> so what so what do so what are we seeing here? We're seeing an opportunity to darken the whole scene, still have our point of interest, but not have it take over the scene and we can give the eyes their own illumination. We can give their uh, the eyes its its own like strength here. Um, and it seems that the gesture I applied you know, works just fine. I mean, I don't see any problems with it at all. Uh, posing it seems like there's, there, there could be a little more neck visible, but things are flexible in all kinds of angles, and we have a camera angle here uh, to mess around with. So the neck isn't always going to be visible, and I don't mind. I'm still going to uh, shadow a lot of hair on it. Um, I do want to do one more thing, which is just kind of press that, press on the W control and just move it forward a little more. Again, you, you, you tuck in the, 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 the chin and it's just still not enough, right? It still feels like it's just not twisted enough. She's not twisted enough. Especially for someone who is messing around with like arcane magic or 
magic that you shouldn't be messing around with. Um, but she has some kind of talent for it, some kind of control over it. You can screenshot, it sends it straight to your desktop. I'm going to close it because I, I, I messed up my Photoshop's RAM usage. I don't want it to start humming on me while I'm working, but I've maxed out my Portrait Studio uh, graphics a little bit. So you guys can, you have different profiles for different computer strengths. Mine is a little bit stronger, but because I was messing with Premiere, I, I, I think I messed around with Photoshop RAM or something. I don't know what I did. Um, so let's let's get started. <clears throat> First couple corrections I'm going to miss. See where you were before. She was kind of just like a big potato. She really didn't do anything. One arm was behind there. This arm came here. Now we have a bit more of a gesture happening and we can show off an arm, some light that's traveling along that arm. <sighs> let's talk lighting. <coughs> Excuse me. The lighting in this case is abysmal because we've found so many issues with it so far. Um, we found that it's too bright, it's too giving, it's, it's doing too much work and it's not really casting that same magical element of like a dungeon, deep dungeon, um, you know, uh, uh, environment. Oh man, I'm having the worst chest pain. <laughs> Shit. So what I'm gonna do is just throw a big black darkened layer right on top of it at like 50% and I'm going to delete away on that layer. Yo, coronavirus ain't no joke, y'all. If I die, remember me. <laughs> I know you guys would. So I'm going to throw in that, let some of that magic come through, which is creating a really, really cool kind of setup here. And I'm going to just try to incorporate these. Corrections. I think the forehead is a little bit too high. Okay, and then we're gonna erase away at the eyes. Alright, so we have a really, really cool shadow. Barely make out the face. And when you guys paint, you guys are so crazy about showing too much light on the face. You actually lose the character. Which is, which is lame because you guys didn't even need that much. You guys didn't need this overly represented, um, you know, representation of the face. It wasn't that important to have the face light up as if all of the lights of the studio are on it. It's not necessary. It's cheesy to do that. So using the background color, I'm going to try to bring out the shape. And I'm going to choose this kind of like dungeony, some light popping in. Just nothing too extravagant, because remember it's a darker scene. And then these lights here, these values, I'm just going to bring them down <clears throat> to help me get started on the hair. And then just go for it. Right now, in my room there isn't a subfloor like it's not level so I I made a floating table my neighbor Bob helped me make a floating table which is really really cool cause it's got no legs and it's been in between my closets um, so my chair no matter how high I float it up it's still not high enough because I'm anticipating the subfloor I will put in so I'm just having the hardest time <laughs> using this tablet again I'm not used to this office yet at all so it's going to take me some time. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this arm work a little bit. Just throw in some really super basic values here. I'm not too worried about it not reading like as a super awesome arm, just enough that it's Representing the lighting as needed. Okay. And then there's that magical element that's being caught on the arm. Okay, so already we're doing a lot. And what are the major fundamentals I changed today? I wrote them down. What are they? Can anyone list them out for me? So the magic light that you threw on her face actually makes no sense. So you're going to have to rethink that. Maybe it's coming in from around. Excuse me. Okay, 
and then maybe there is another kind of balance light out there on the outer rim of the studio or the environment or the cavern or wherever she's hiding. <coughs> Don't overstress yourself. Acting, framing, light. Excellent. So what did we do in the name of acting? How did we improve the scene? I like explain it. How have I applied these fundamentals today? <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of <coughs> don't underestimate how much breath you lose. Just talk. Yeah, that was something that I was dealing with last week. Talking and breathing at the same time was just so difficult. I will kill the Rona myself if it takes. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Don't even joke, I'm already about to cry. <laughs> I'm going to be fine, Louise, you're so sweet. <clears throat> okay, so what in the name of that did I make that change for? All right. Um, so what I'm going to do now, which might shock you, is darken the face even more. Because I, I really don't feel like she's losing all that much about who she is when we darken. I feel like we've enhanced her character when we darken her even more. Right? It feels like we are adding to her character. So the lighting, remember, is a reflection of the character. We characterize. Lighting is act. It's all linked. That's the beauty of note taking is you see that, hey, this is just one big circle. This is all just, well, that's linked to that, and that's linked to that, and it's just all one big humongous circle. Have you guys noticed that yet? Put your hand up if you've noticed that. Well, that's linked to that, and that's linked to that, and that leads back to that, and that's why we take notes, because it really helps to you know, create a better understanding of how it's just not really 17,000 different fundamentals that scare the average Joe from never drawing again. It's just one core fundamental, just science, and everything else branches out of that. And it's like tops, tops, maybe. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here because I haven't really sat down and counted them all and theorized them all into one universal formula, but it's probably like the fundamentals that you can count with your hand. <clears throat> and then, you know, lighting is linked to directing, which is linked to cinema, which is linked to framing, which is linked to composition, which is linked to gesture, what the shape is that we're framing, and then it's linked to, it's all just one big circle. So how have we represented lighting. Light is too bright, it's too giving, takes away from the magical dungeon feel, throwing in darkness level. This is letting the magic come through and elevate the focal point. Beautiful, Maria. I don't get the pose. It's a bit weird that she's holding fire under her armpit. Well, it's just like a twisted little thing she's doing, kind of like crawling and showing off on the hand. She's not crawling on the magic. Lifted her shoulder, enhanced the gesture in the, in the hair. Um... Magical deodorant ruined uh, the piece. Okay. Um, shout out to physics. You improve the acting by correcting the gesture to portray the character. Beautiful. The light, in, light is the scene. When you change the light, you change the acting. Okay. So let's move forward. All right. And so at this point in time, this is when we bring in references. And I'm just using my smudge brush. Basic, basic smudge brush. And that's what I'm using to kind of just merge. So now we're traveling from the environment lighting of the secondary light into the universal lighting of the dungeon. And it's not anatomically sound uh, as of yet. This is all just really, really quick hashing so that the piece starts to come together faster. Okay, so when it comes to uh, the background, we need to start showing off like where the background is. So is the background darker than her by a lot and the, the secondary is taking over? If so, the space behind her boob is going to be black, right, which is looking like that. And then we have a lot of the space behind her as black with only the environment light directly behind her 
um, shining her hair, revealing her shape. Or she could be darker than the background. It just depends on the type of light environment you want to represent. So you see it's a little bit more dramatic when we have black and then we have the balanced light. You just black is a very, very strong shade to use, so you gotta use it with a mind to make it pop or with like actual purpose for it. Never just have black floating around. You're doing it for a reason. You should never have like 50% of a canvas black. You're just you have nothing. It's like having 50% of the canvas white it makes no sense. So we have this really really nice crawling effect and then you have a choice here so I'm going to do some framing. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Can't keep muting, I'm sorry. Um, we have a choice here to frame some of this shadow. So we had a really cool shadow opportunity from the shoulder, which I really, really like. But I feel like we don't have to have it, but it, it'd be cool to have it, right? But it's not really the main thing happening. It's not about the cat shadow. It's about her um, like magical power. And then back to the acting quality. I mean, is she doing all that she can do with her face? Um, I don't think so. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna enhance what she's doing. Enhance like they do in '90s movies. Enhance. And I'm gonna just bring in a little bit more of that cartoon world characterization. I'm gonna just uh, jump into liquify, which I haven't done a lot of today. And just raise that eyebrow up. Not too much, because I, I don't want her to look like... It really just depends. If she's the she-beast, she's the main main villain, then yeah, give her that dominating eyebrow. If she's a, you know, one of the, like a succubus, or one of the many henchmen, and don't really overdo it. You don't want her to look like she's the boss. If she's not the boss. If you want her to look like she's the boss, just go ham. Use all the elements that you can. That's how you differentiate between a boss and, a, and a, a subordinate in movies, is by making these choices. And there are other things you can do with the eyes that look magical and otherworldly, but do not look um, basic. So you can do that kind of value drop and then bring in specular lights for that glazed kind of like element and then still keep a water line but have that water line illuminated. Sometimes a character that has watery eyes but they're evil makes them look more evil because it makes them look unstable. It makes them look dangerous like they, they're crying at the same time. So tears aren't always a choice against the sinister character. Sometimes enhance the sinister character. And then we've got some of that shadow, eye shadow. Again, back to acting. How would the makeup artist help enhance the character? So I would bring in some of that shadow. And we've talked about villains time and time again. <coughs> and we want to use that dark circle. That dark circle took her to the next level. Um, and it's just the slightest little dark circle. It hasn't removed her beauty. A lot of beautiful people have dark circles, it's not going to decrease her beauty, it's going to add to the character. I'm going to put a bit of a shiny skin right here underneath. I'm going to save before Photoshop crashes. And another thing that you can do to enhance the um, madness is to show more of the upper part of the pupil. We we don't always want to see every, you know, every single little uh, detail when we're doing a portrait. We want to control the detail around every point of interest. So in order to make the eyes do more work from a distant, like from a from zooming out without having to zoom in and paint every little eyelash, we can do more by just 
bit of space above the eyes. And she's looking that much more crazy. Kind of looking like me right now. Okay, so she's done a lot now. She's doing a lot now. Before it was a little bit more sexy, kind of bedroom eyes, half closed. <coughs> and after, a little bit more piercing, a stare. I like the after. I'm going to keep it. These are the decisions I make as the critiquer, but it's always your choice. That's why I show you both options so that you can see you know, the difference between each. really really quick quick shit like it's not anything that is substantial or profound it's just quick changes but added up they will make the biggest difference we need our dark spots back so we need the blackest black we will use on the face it's always required we never skip the dark spots why did anyone anyone want to venture as to why we never skip these dark spots what do they work as so I'm going to just apply them here too What do they help do for the painting? <sighs> Yo, I can't breathe. <laughs> Make her crazy eyed. Ah, uh, Enhance the Madness uh, sounds like a heavy metal album. <laughs> um, yeah, boss brow acting. As the term describes it so well, since I find I always come up short with the expression portrayal of a character, they feel too stiff. This term really helps. That's good, Christina. They add depth. Good. What else? Dark spots act as focal points. Uh, cavities. Cavities is good, folks. Don't laugh. You're you're going in the right direction. Um, don't be nervous answering the question. It's it's just it's good. It's a, you're exactly what the answer is. <laughs> cavities. So you're using the blackest black in that form. If you don't have a black to represent every cavity, then you don't have an anchor to what is the darkest, most highest. Uh, like the lowest, highest repel, like repelling of the light, because we just at this point, then the light can touch everything, and that makes no sense. So it works as an anchor for all of the other values. If we don't have black applied where black should be, then what's the reference point for all the other values? So cavities is exactly the answer. Black spots are corresponded correspond to the cavities in the face, and that's why we only use them on holes on cavities. So the dark spots of the mouth or the holes of the mouth, the holes of the nose. And then there's another reason we use dark spots, which is pigment. So anywhere that is actually black needs black. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So again, I'm going to use my smudge brush to help move some values around. And I'm going to try to create now some, some zones. I want the blue zone to be the anything that the environment light touches. So anything that is not being illuminated by the magic is going to stay blue. So that means half her arm is blue. And this is how you create a light environment, by the way. And anything that the light, the magical element does touch turns green. And that's how you make sense. That's how you make light sources, multiple light sources in a scene make sense. They have their own little universes of light exposure. And then obviously now we have a nice separation between the two. Not everything is blending together. Anywhere that the that this green magic does sneak in, we'll have some. The rest is all up to you. The rest is all you're doing. You know, if you want to make her eyes glow, go ahead. I was just working off whatever you snowballed. If you want to make it a green color, green is a wonderful color for evil characters uh, across different media from Disney to, you know, Ghostbusters. We've used green to represent evil. It's just goopy, swampy, you know, that's what... I mean when I say the swamp, it's just, it's where monsters come from. The swamp. Also known as our subconscious. <laughs> hey! Um, is this should Twitch stream. 
Um, I don't really. I feel like I need to branch out that much right now. All right, and then we have just the rest of the clothing, which I'm going to drop in value just as the light touches it. And then we need um, some of those. If she is a bit like anorexic, or not that I'm using that term lightly, um, or she doesn't eat, or you know she's dedicated her life to magic, so she's malnourished. Look up. I mean, to your own uh, at, at your own risk. Look up these references and uh, work with them. If you get triggered by seeing something like that, please don't look that stuff up. If it is a trigger, please stay away from that. <coughs> And then we have a little bit more shadow. I'm just trying to assess which are almost at the dark spot level of values. That's really all it is. Once you know what your blackest black is, everything is obviously a step up from the deepest cavity in the face. So you can create like a ladder and know exactly how dark to go for certain areas. That's one of the biggest questions I get from students is, how do I know what's black and what's not? What's what's light and what's not? <sighs> I'm sorry, is that referring to who? Um, yeah, stay on topic, please. I think if we move the right arm, we lose the hunch, which loses some of the character. Secondary colors are inherently more villainous. <laughs> are they? I think orange, uh, when we did the Harvest Goddess, was like a ho orange is a very forgiving, kind of like motherly character. We see it a lot in the way other characters are designed. Like orange feels like a more warm character, inviting character. Like a mom. Purple, blue aren't always villainous, but green is just significantly more villainous. <laughs> it's got a really bad rep. And then I'm just sawing some more of that magical hair, I mean sinister hair, forward. So we, we have a choice now how, how you want to play with this. At this point, lighting can do a lot more for you. You can choose to darken the space behind her and get this closed scene, right? You can choose to lighten the far side and get like a light dungeon break in the dungeon, like there's a dun dungeon window and some of that daylight is coming in. That's right along the edges of her, of her body. I would allow that if it was a full illustration zoomed out, um, but because it's a tight little space that we work with and it's not going to give us the amount of room we need to mess around with her silhouette. So what I mean is if it was a, um, <coughs> if it was a horizontal canvas and she was there on her like throne with her hair drooping down and we have just a little bit of light shining in this way, that would make sense why, you know, we would allow some of that light in. But we've zoomed in so far, the canvas was only up until her face and her bust so we can't really mess around too much with the light coming in from a window because that light is just going to end up leading out away from the canvas um, so that's why I would recommend darkening the rest of the canvas so it feels like there's just enough light in, in this scene to you know, create the environment we need because it can't just be pitch black if it was pitch black and there was only the light of her magic, everything would be black except the light of her magic. That still works, <laughs> believe it or not. Great illustration still, because it makes sense. But for a movie scene, maybe, and the initial introductory shots we have of her in the shadows, you know, we, yeah, we would darken her this hard. So this is plenty. And then we go back to where we were before, which is even more plenty, kind of too plenty, and then we go to the before, which is just too much. 
Okay, so we, we, we had enough what we're, where we were coming from before. And I think that's acceptable here. So we have a bit more character, a bit more intensity. I, I want her to look a little more a little more beta for some reason. I'm just I feel like it's a rip off of every other character to give her that intense eyebrow as well as the open eye. So I kind of want her to look a little bit more like somebody the protagonist is seeking for help, not somebody the protagonist is fighting. And I'm going to make her eyebrows a little I mean if we're talking horror like insidious character, we get rid of the eyebrows. When we get rid of the eyebrows and in the dark circles under the eyes. That's when we start talking horror movie. Okay, see that? Instantly horrifying. Why? Because it looks closer to a skull. It looks closer to death. Um, so we want something like in between. So you can still give her her eyebrows. She still looks like she's a student of magic, but like dark magic. And she doesn't have that big boss lady eyebrow. She just looks like she's more the victim of the magic than the boss. And you just have so many other directions to move with it. You got the elbow, which I tried to include here. <clears throat> the arm should definitely be skinnier. Could her cheekbones be more pronounced? There's really not much space to show them off. The hair is blanketing a lot of that out of the way. So, I mean, if you want to redesign the hair, go ahead. I don't recommend it. I like how the hair is working. There's only so much time to apply every change I want to apply, but <clears throat> and I feel like it, we could use a bit more shadow on the arms. Meh, I mean it's up to you which which side of the universal light you want to enhance. You could darken this side leaving only the magic of the spell illuminating the arm and then have this be the only illuminator. It's it's your choice how the scene was built. Right. Okay, so couple before and after frames before after a little more active you see space in the silhouette here I definitely recommend really going in depth with your Porsche studio um, model just did a quick little pose here you could really take your time turn on some mood music light a candle and start posing this character so that you you know 100% your actress this character did the most did the most they can do in bringing this uh, this the scene to life with just that initial acting fundamental I, I, I wrote at the top for you <clears throat> and then you dress it up with better lighting and then you have the story to guide your color choices and and gesture and you know everything falls into place but what am I saying here you need better references your references before were not good <clears throat> um, so the next piece is really really similar in that all we had to do was just get a darkened layer and just plop a big environmental shadow on top of it and that's it that's all we had to do and then out of that we're gonna decide what's gonna be the dominant light source right now you have you have two light sources fighting each other just like we had in this in this piece here we had two dominant light sources <clears throat> we decided which one was going to rule we, we said this is going to rule and this is going to be a secondary the universal light was dimmer the secondary light became the primary so that's what we're doing here you have this light from the outside with sparkles and glitter on the water that is almost as bright as the lotus here let's darken that and decide that this lotus here to, if we were a movie director and we wanted it to really pop, we would have decided... Sorry, I really need to cough really hard.
we would have decided on a time of day where this lotus flower did, does the most work. And so by radial shading, which is shrinking my brush as I erase, I'm building volume as I erase, which is reinforcing the light strength. See that? So we've got that. And then, and again, you can also open up Portia Studio and build a better reference for yourself. And just take a look at what's happening here. We have this less light, but more is happening in the painting. Explain that. What? And it's just, just this is what I mean when I say um, do your do your form studies so that you know what the power of of having a light environment means. Like what 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 a light environment means. I feel like there would be a cast shadow of the arms in front of the light, so I'm going to throw away shadow before, after. Do you see that? And then imagine we had color quality in the light. We had more color control. The purple doesn't make much sense. I don't understand the purple. <coughs> so we have, you know, different shifts in the environment colors. Like you can do all kinds of fun. Blue is always the given because that's kind of our atmosphere color. Um, but you can you can do you can go anywhere you want with it, as long as you know the dominant light source here is this lotus. So that means that this side of this rock, this oops, this side of this rock, this side, this side, which is basically a shit ton of form studies, and that's all it really is. All get that pale white of that lotus flower where everything else is dark. All right, and it's just a really, really basic washing of one consistent value and it does so much for the scene. And then just imagine everywhere else there is a side to each rock, a side to the trees. And if you feel like it's too much shadow in one section, oh, it's too much shadow, it's starting to look a little bit dark, it's supposed to be a magical scene. Well, you need a little bit of darkness to have magic visible. I mean, that's always the, as it goes. There's no light without the darkness. <laughs> Some cheesy thing like that. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> I'll let you guys cut this out and make like this. I'm not even going to try to give you ideas. Um... Yeah, so you need a little bit of shadow to show the hope that this flower represents. Cheesy. No, I'm sorry. But that's the name of the game. We're always retelling the same old story. Um, it's good. I'm not saying your story is cheesy. I'm just saying, like, you know, we've, we've seen it all. Just make a better lighting environment for it. <clears throat> and then we've got the black in the foreground, which I'm going to filter blur to create some depth. Just a quick little trick that helps create depth. So it's not good that it's just one tree. Imagine like a couple more trees, some leaves in the foreground, also blurred. Um, you know, another tree here, another branch, <coughs> a bush. <laughs> I'm sorry. It could it could be a lot you could do is basically what I'm saying. A couple of those cattail thingies. Some grass. Maybe a frog just watching the whole thing kinda <laughs> go down. And then, you know, you can blur all that stuff. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. <coughs> And I don't like how it's centered, so I'm just going to throw that off to the side. And then back to this character. <clears throat> so we want to make it feel like this light is that strong, so I'm going to give it a quick little halo with a soft brush. The soft brush in my set has a bit of texture to it, as you can see. So it's always nice to not use a purely soft, soft brush, like an airbrush, because that does, does not look the best. And I'm going to get that exact white. No, I'm not going to get a light beige color. I'm going to get this exact white and throw it on the skin. That's how you make things look like they're in the same environment. 
You grab the actual color of the light and use it on the thing the light is touching. No duh. The fabric doesn't really look like fabric because it's not, every little fold isn't treated as its own form study. Whew, it's hard to breathe, y'all. <clears throat> So we want to treat every little fold like it's its own little mountain. Or else don't paint folds. Alright, that's all it is. It shouldn't try to generalize texture. There's no such thing as texture if you zoom in enough. Then it becomes one big shape. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you're going to represent a texture like folds, zoom in and treat every little fold like its own little mound, its own little bump. And it'll, you'll get so much more out of that. And Let's talk back to that, let's go back to that little bit of bounce, like universal light. If this universal light, we're going to give it its own little blue. Again, this is the blue of the environment around, outside of the forest. We're going to throw that blue in there and create a separate environment outside of this private little magical grotto where this shit's going down. <coughs> And I'm just using a color mode. That's all I'm using. And it's just to create different universes of light. And so look at how much more impact you have out of this scene just from these changes. All we did was create some depth in the foreground. Chose which of these lights was going to be the dominant light. Whoa, what just happened? Why is it doing that? Merge down. Merge down. Down. Yeah, folds or mountains. Good. I like those clicks. Folds or mountains. Holy shit, something just clicked in my head. That's what I like. <clears throat> Would there be subsurface scattering on the arms, or is that too much with the lighting, or is that based on warm or cool lighting? Subsurface has nothing to do with warm or cool. It has to do with the fact that you are in a position where the light, where you, where you took the cat, where you took the picture of that, of that. Um, character where you took the picture is in front of the light or isn't if you put your hand let's 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 just put this to rest let's just put this to bed once and for all subsurface scattering put your hand in front of the light in front of you or in front of the sun if it's not that's the epitome of subsurface scattering that is the x-ray position that is the stage one step one of the frame that is the 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 the, the landmark the marker the the, the, the poster child of subsurface scattering. Everything else where you aren't directly having a character in front of the light, if it has some level of subsurface scattering, it means the light is nearby doing some kind of silhouette on the character, even if the camera isn't behind the character's silhouette. Do you understand? So somehow, some way, there is an x-ray happening between the light and the object, and the object itself is see-through enough. There is nowhere near enough light either from this dude maybe on her hands but again the camera isn't in a position where it's behind and underneath her hands seeing the light shine through like an x-ray and this light is too weak so no there would be no opportunity to show off subsurface scattering if you're talking about the kind of subsurface scattering let's say you downloaded a subsurface scattering texture uh, for your modded Skyrim or something and all of a sudden everything looks more realistic. That's a forced subsurface scattering. That's just considering that it might look better if we pretended their subsurface scattering on the character <clears throat> even if they're not in a silhouette position. And if there is subsurface in this world we just don't have a comparison to notice exactly where it is. We're just gonna theoretically factor it in. Unless you are dealing with a light behind a character and the camera either in a perfect sweet spot where you can see the x-ray or slightly off sweet spot or just a little bit in, you don't have to worry about subsurface scattering, okay? It, the time you do have to worry about it, and this is the amendment to the rule, is if the object is water or crystal or some kind of super, super translucent object that is always showing off subsurface scattering, but if it's a character like a human being, our highest, tiniest little layer of skin from ears to nose to skin is where subsurface scattering happens and that's just too small a, f a fraction. So like unless it's a crystal or some kind of magical see-through translucent substance or material, 
you don't have to worry about it. And if it's a crystal, then you have to learn how to paint a crystal. And that subsurface scattering is built into that study. Do you understand? So if it's not <coughs> opportune moment, don't worry about it. Just focus on darkening the scene enough, y'all. Something you could do that could enhance this is bring in some kind of secondary color to the lotus. I mean, every it doesn't have shadow in it, but everywhere you would place a shadow, you can include some like pink. You know, just like some pinkish color, which could explain where all the pink around the character is coming from. Oh. I don't even know why it's not painting. Oh, there we go. You know, that, something like that. And then that would explain where all the pink is coming from. And that's like the best that you can really do at the moment. Let's take a look at the before and after. We have before. No, you, know, you can see it for yourselves. Way too much battle between this lotus, which is supposed to be magic. And if I was a movie director and I had a magical thing and I turned on the light, have you ever tried turning on the light bulb, outdoor light bulb? Like, let's say some patio lights in the daytime. It just looks stupid. <laughs> but then as soon as it's dark it's just this thing is beautiful it's glowing it's magical so if I was a movie director would I make the idiotic choice of trying to make something glow in the daytime no glow worms all that stuff that beautiful shit happens when the environment is dark enough and did I lose the after thank god almighty how did that even I did not save that's so crazy all right <laughs> I don't even know how it didn't erase before, after. So we darkened, we took stuff away from the painting and then we ended up doing more for the painting. Isn't that crazy? And that's because lighting is extremely underrated and you guys are not spending enough time studying light, understanding what it does for a scene. Um, and you guys are so confused, understandably, because you have these elements that you want to write about but you've you've got this these rules this like like lighting that you know you have to have this mysterious my mystical abstract concept that you have to have in a painting to make things visible or else everything would be black so you're at, at, at odds really you just had to track down the writing the writing told you this is a magical lotus flower everything else doesn't matter after that and so you've decided the, the lotus flower is what's going whatever it is is going to be the the ruler of the painting, the god of the painting, and everything else, yeah, yeah, it, nighttime is a thing, we can darken the, we can wait till it gets a little bit darker to start shooting, right? <coughs> so that's it for today, two, two pieces that we worked on that improved because we darkened the scene, um, so take that, take that lesson, and remember that it's, it's not always about cheesy over-representation and over-exposure, over-exposure looks, it looks gross, it looks noob, that's a new mistake. That's a common beginner mistake. I haven't made a theme like that, but let's just call it that. Let's call today's class common beginner mistakes. One of the most common beginner mistakes is overexposure in an illustration. The darker illustrations that are trying to create mood. What's mood? If you've ever tried to create a mood in your room or you know, de designed a room around a mood, it always starts with the lighting. You know, you dim lights, you turn on a certain warm candle, and then you have a mood. Right? So if a mood is a pivotal part of designing an illustration, and you've seen countless illustrators talk about, okay, the mood, guys, the mood, think about the mood, actually write the mood down on a paper and don't forget it. Well, it starts off with how dark the scene is. That's a different degrees of darkness. If you like today's session, and by the way, thank you everyone for coming. I'm sorry I was so short of breath. I, I have the Rona, and I will get over it soon. But it's, it's made it really hard to breathe and talk at the same time. But I'm, I'm miles better than I was last week or two weeks ago. But <clears throat> thank you for coming to the, to the live stream. It means the world when you guys join them. It's every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want your stuff critiqued, if you want to join the community, go to istaback.com and click on the Reddit icon here. If you like the brushes you saw today, you can go on my store, istaback.com slash store, to find Portrait Studio, which is currently 50% off, and I'm going to keep it 50% off until this whole Rona virus goes down. Maybe some of you want to stay home and start working on, you know, your art, and you want to buy it, and it's 90 fucking dollars, and no one's making money right now, so 
<clears throat> you guys can... I was going to keep it, and it's been on sale for a shit long time because I wanted to apologize for being gone for so long, so I extended the sale, and then I extended the sale again because I was gone for another month uh, for construction, and then I got sick, and then now this coronavirus thing happened, so I was like, yeah, whatever, leave it on sale. Um, yeah, but it's on sale uh, on my website, and Patreon, if you guys want to join as watchers, it doesn't really require you guys to join for $50 a month, not every Patreon is like that, and you don't have to be a patron to join the sessions, obviously they're free. Um, it's every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube, if you subscribe you get a notification, a lot of people aren't getting notifications, I don't know why, YouTube's just been doing that to creators, um, but yeah, if you want to join as a dollar, as a watcher, that'd be great. Um, if everybody joined on the community, on Reddit community as a watcher, I really would never need to worry about YouTube um, not sending out notifications and stuff like that and AdSense and whatnot. I don't even think they monetize my videos there too long, but I don't want to shrink them either. I have been doing preview videos, which is really awesome, um, but <clears throat> I don't want to shrink these le lectures because what's the value of a lecture if it lasts five minutes? I mean, what lecture at a university lasts five minutes? Um, to really deliver the information, I need these videos to be long, so I'm not really following YouTube's rules. That's why I've been promoting Patreon instead. So again, thank you everyone for coming. I really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, I promise I'll feel better, and I, I will try to keep coming to these Tuesday and Thursday meets. Because um, it's just, everything is so crazy everywhere. I just need some one thing to feel familiar. Um, I step out of my room and it's just drywall on the floor and screws and, and, and bare walls and insulation and then I step into my room and then it's a new office and I step outside and it's Rona, Rona's gonna get you and, 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 and then nothing is familiar, everything is crazy different and I really needed to get back to these so that we can feel like one thing hasn't changed, one thing is normal, one thing is just exactly the way we left it, if not better. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for the support on Instagram and Facebook. You guys are so beautiful. I'm sorry I can't reply to every comment, but I do try. <clears throat> I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye.